Hello, and welcome to Spiritual Awakenings with Linda Minner. How do you experience God? Do you experience God? You know, Moses, in the Bible and the Old Testament, took off his sandals because God said, you are on sacred ground. So he experienced God in a mighty way through a burning bush. The bush did not burn, but he saw fire in it, and God spoke directly to him. Other people in the Bible, God spoke through Jesus, and so God was spoke, speaking directly to them as well. Do you experience God through uh, direct communication? through communication, through creation in nature? How do you experience God? Sometimes we can have a feeling that we may say is intuition, but in fact it may actually be prayer. When you're talking to God, we can just talk to Him. And the experience of the Holy Spirit for some people is profound. They'll say, I feel like I had goosebumps, or I knew God was here with me during this experience. I'm sure when a baby's born, that might be the experience for people, or when they pass away, those moments before death, I wonder about that. I've worked in a couple of hospitals as a chaplain, and those moments around death are very sacred I wonder, and you might wonder too, what is it like to look upon the face of God? So, in the Bible, we read of people who heard Jesus speak to them. For example, the woman at the well. At first, she didn't know who he was, and he had no bucket to draw water, and the well was deep. And yet, he asked for a cup of water. And she explained the facts around the situation to him, not having a cup, not having a bucket. Tell me about this water. And he knew of water of life that she didn't know of before. And it's as if her eyes were opened when he told her prophetic things that she could not have known about, that, that he could not have known about, other than being one with God. She went away rejoicing because someone had known her so well. How well do we know God? How do we find him? Sometimes when things are very, very difficult, sadness, grief, turmoil, anger, some feelings we may not even want to express or feel in the first place, we may even find ourselves saying, where is God? The Desert Fathers talked about the dark night of the soul, that time of desolation, that dark time. Have you ever experienced that? I know I have. And that is the very time when I may or may not feel like reaching out to God when I need to reach out and say, God, help me. Help me. I need you. There are people out there in need right now, not just the wildfires, not those who are mourning the death of the Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, not just the people that are looking at society and saying, why is there fighting? Why are police officers being shot? Why are young black people being shot, among others? Why? I don't understand God. I believe God is big enough for us to say that to him. He's ever present. He's ever powerful. In Hebrews, we learn more about, in the New Testament, we learn about Jesus and how he was equal to God. In other parts in scripture, we see that Jesus, though being God, humbled himself and became a servant and died on the cross. When he died on the cross, it was a humiliating death. 
is a death for someone other than a person of righteousness. I think about the foot of the cross, what Mother His Mary must have felt seeing her son sacrificed when he had done no wrong. I can only imagine when Jesus cried out to his father, why have you abandoned me? I don't think he really believed he was abandoned, but he certainly felt it with nail prints in his hands and his feet. So much pain that he bore in suffering for our sins. And he did it out of love, love for you, love for me, love for the whole world. It's kind of awesome to be able to take in and difficult at best. And yet we too sometimes cry out, God, why have you abandoned me? Why have you forsaken me? Where are you? He is right there in the midst. His word says he'll never abandon us nor forsake us and that we are never alone. But there are times when we feel alone, don't we? Even times at parties, you might have been in a crowded room feeling very isolated. And now with the pandemic, people literally feel isolated because they are. This is not to discourage us, to bring us down, to make us feel hopeless. No, no, there's more than that. God Almighty, who made the heavens and the earth, the stars and the sun and the moon, who created Adam and Eve, and who breathed life into you and me when we were born. God Almighty knows every hair on your head, knows you by name, knows me by name, and loves us. I can't say that the Christian life is without difficulty. I don't think that would be being honest. Sure, there are difficult times. There are sacrificial times. There are times of suffering. But there are also times of great joy. And so we may experience God in the pain, but let us also remember God in the joy, in the weddings, in the baptisms, in the babies being born, in a beautiful flower, a puppy that's barking, a cat that snuggles up next to you. For whatever things that bring you joy, God is in the midst. He is there. He is real. He loves you. So how do you experience God? Maybe it's through Bible stories. Maybe it's as magical to you as a burning bush. Or maybe it's sovereign and awestruck. Maybe you experience him when you just smile. How do you experience God? I'd love to know. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead, it's free. And if you'd like to leave a comment, love to hear it and I'll respond. God bless you. May you experience God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit in a very real way today. May God make himself manifestly known in you. May you feel the grace of the love he has for you. As he calls you by name, may you know that you belong to God who will never leave you. May you know that you are loved. May you be encouraged that this day is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. God bless you.